My God can handle this. Somebody shout glory. Glory. I can be in the midst of the biggest trial I've ever been through. I can be in the midst of the biggest situation. I, but all I got to do is shout glory. Glory. I'm letting, I'm letting the devil know. I'm letting everybody know. I ain't worried about this. My God's got this. Glory. 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 Jesus, man. Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Come on, we exalt your holy name. Father, we yield, we yield, we yield to you. Have your way. Thank you, Lord. Father, Father, I, your desire no matter what we came here for, your desire is that we leave with more than what we came for. And so, Lord, that's my prayer. Let everyone leave here with more than what they came here with. Whatever, Lord, may they leave with more strength. May they leave with an impartation of your holy presence, your holy spirit, your holy love. Lord, may there be an impartation deposit on the inside of them. And they leave here with more than what they came with. Father, right now, I bless, I bless this time with you. I bless this time with your word. I bless this time with your precious, holy sons and daughters that are here tonight. I bless their life. Bless their family, Lord. Bless situations. Their life change, transform after tonight. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I'm just going to tell you what, what I'm hearing. You, some, so, somebody in here, you, you haven't been able to run. You're going to be able to run. I don't know. Listen, you, I, man, I don't know. You, your, your body, I don't know, man. But there's a, there's a healing taking place. Glory to the Lamb of God. Come on, isn't Jesus good? Yes. It is in He wonderful. Yes. Ah, yeah, glory to God. My boy, I'm telling you, He's here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Yield to you. Yield to your presence. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Mm -hmm. Glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Look, greet, greet a couple people around you. Tell them, let them know it's good to see them in the house of God this evening. Man, it's good to see you. What more that praise party, huh? Make sure them ACs turned down and didn't get, because some, make sure they didn't, they didn't, because they were on hold on 75 earlier. Make sure they came down, stayed down. Bring me that text message. Bring me that text message. From Nicole? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, didn't, didn't, I told, look, God said supernatural provision was going to be linked up to these words. Um, amen. Uh, and it's flowing. He said promotion was coming. So, some things are going to come to your doorstep, huh? Yeah. My wife got a text message. I'm telling you, man, it is flowing. There's some of the, some, I, I got to let some other guys speak here soon and share what God did in their life, huh, Elder Jose? That'll be another night. Powerful, what faith can do. But my wife got this text from uh, one of our overseer's wife, uh, Jericho, his wife. Uh, she's probably glad she's not here right now because she's, she's so shy. She'd probably be quivering right now. She said, good afternoon. I wanted to share some news. Finance has been rough. I even considered not, not giving my tithe. But I was reminded, trust God. See, and that's what tithing is all about. It's trusting God. I trust God more than I trust money. 
I trust God. More, come on, come on, say that. I trust God more than I trust money. And she said, so I gave. Well, today my boss said he needed to speak with me. And fear immediately set in. But I went to my notes. <laughs> come, on. come on, I don't know if you were here Sunday. I went to my notes and uh, uh, went over and over. And I, I read, don't think you're going to stop here. In this precious time, you will be expanding. I said to myself, expansion, blessings, blessings, blessings. So long story short, are y'all ready for this? No, he's excited because he knows. I received an $8,000 a year pay increase. Worry was trying to sit in because with this increase meant someone was going to lose their job because I was going to take it. But instead, that person is going to be moving within the company. God did it. See, God did it. No. Come on, man. Man, glory to God. I'm telling you, y'all, and, and it's just flowing like that. I mean, golly. Hallelujah. Um, um, uh, and you, you need to receive that. Thank you, Lord. And no, man, God did that. And someone's like, he'd do it for you. But don't, you, you can't get, you can't get, you can't let worry. See how she had a, uh, uh, come against it? And she, she didn't let it get in. It was trying to get in. You can't let it get in. No, no, I, I know fa faith. What's the evidence you're walking in faith? There's joy and peace. Why is there joy and peace? Why? But why? But why is there joy and peace? See, come on, no, I'm gonna come on, class. Romans 15, 13. Why is there joy and peace? Because why? See, God, that's why. See, I can't conjure it up. I can't try and make, I can't try and make this peace. I can't try and make this joy. No, God said, he, the God of hope, oh, he will fill you with joy and peace in believing. While you're walking in faith, a joy and a peace. You, it don't mean the situation don't exist. No, the situation is very much there and it's very much real. But in the midst of that, I'm reminded of who God is and who I belong to. And so therefore, he fills me with a joy and a peace that the average person don't have if they're walking in my shoes. You know, you know, because there's some situations you face as a believer that you responded to different when you used to face that same situation when you were out there in the world and you didn't have God in your life and you were panicky, you were a worry wart. You were a f man. You were fear. You would you 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 would get mad. You'd be mad at everybody. You'd be frustrated, and you just thought it was the end of the world. But then fast forward to your faith in God, and you're like, man. I, I mean, there's a peace. There's a joy. You can't make it up. Okay. So now, are you ready for? Can I hit you with the truth? So then, if you are not. If you are lacking joy and peace, can I hit you with the truth? Baby, you ain't living by faith. Oh, no, I'm living by faith. Man, you better calm down because that would mean God's a liar. That would mean God is a liar and he didn't, he, you're walking in faith, but he, he didn't fill you with joy and peace. No, no, no. See, I didn't say, you say I don't have faith. I didn't say you didn't have faith. Having faith and living by faith are two different things. Okay? You have faith, but you may not be living by it. You see? That's like knowing how to swim but, and being in the water and choosing not to. God said he will fill you with joy and peace while you're believing. Why you're living by faith, walking by faith, you see? So, so then, the evidence of me living by faith, that I'm living by faith, that there's a joy and a peace, I can't, I can't. And God said, this peace is beyond understanding. Right. You, you, you can't understand it. You're like, How, why? Yeah. I should be. Yeah. But it's like, ah, glory. 
Huh? That's all you can say. Glory. Come on. Glory. It's just, it's just, I don't, it's, you don't have to understand. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. You don't got to understand it. Your understanding has nothing to do with your ability to trust in God. You see what I'm saying? Boy, that's, that's just a quick. And remember, faith is not a preventer. No, you're going to go through stuff. It's your response. You can go through some things. Or Jesus is a liar. Jesus said, in this world, you can have some tribulation. Be of good cheer, though. I've overcome. Don't let it get in you. Don't let it get in you. I've overcome. You're going to be fine. Tell you, you're going to be fine. Amen. Live by faith. Live by faith. And remember, you can't try to live by faith. <laughs> You'll drown. Yeah, the, the, the Egyptians tried to live by faith. They tried it. They tried to cross the sea. They attempted because they saw somebody else do it and drown. That's what trying gets you in the kingdom. No, no. You, you have to live by this. And that, man, look, uh, uh, that's Sunday. That's Sunday. We're supposed to be talking about parenting, right? Let's get. So, parenting, am I, uh, am I parenting by fear, faith, or have I just plain forsaken parenting? Uh, <clears throat> and so I'm just going to pick up the biblical parent principles on being a godly parent, one that God is well pleased with. Now, like I said at the beginning of the, of the course, this is part four. You, 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 there'll be more you'll discover, but th these will help you get going. Amen. 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 Uh, the first one we've already covered, positive, clear-cut objectives. Give them positive, clear-cut objectives. Amen? Amen. Uh, the, the scripture there is Ephesians 6, verse 4. Ephesians 6, verse 4. Number two. What's number two? What, who remembers what number two is? Practice what I preach. Practice. Discipline is on, on number one. That was all number one. We did like a, 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 a day and a half on discipline. What, what, uh, so number two, practice what I preach. Remember, more is caught than just taught. Meaning, they will catch more by your example than you just telling them. Come on, come on. Because if your doing don't match up with your saying, they're like, they, 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 you know, and, and teenagers are slick. They're, they, 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 they're like, oh, no, uh. -uh. Well, you make up your mind, Dad, because you said this, but you did this. And you know what our, exam our, our answer is? Well, I'm, a, I'm an adult. I'm grown. But remember your relationship with your Heavenly Father. You're the child in that. Okay. Let's keep going. Write down these two, two, two texts. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. These, 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 are, these are your notes. These are, these, you got to go back over this. See, because, okay, okay, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, not having heard. See, so just because you heard this once don't mean you got it. No, I got to keep going over this. I keep got to keep going over. I got to go, I got to keep, I got I, I to study this. That's why... And school, what do they do in school? For that whole week, you learn one thing, and at the end of the week, what did you do? You took a test to see did you get it. See, we think we come in here one day, and we got it. No. No, I got I to go over this. Because, you know, really before the work can set in, the first thing that it has to get through is get through your hard head. Because, you know, a lot of times we think we know everything. Especially, oh, God forbid, and then we know a couple of scriptures, we really know everything. You know? 
Pastor, give me a mic. <laughs> When's it my turn? You don't get a turn. This ain't tag and preaching. <laughs> Royal Rumble. Huh? <laughs> Come on. Okay, so where was I? Okay, ten to, let me just, I'm going to read verse 12 in the message. I love it. With each of you, we were like a father with his child holding your hand. Ooh, I like that. Whispering encouragement. Showing you step by step. See, I got, see, a, a, a father, a, 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 a parent will walk them step by step how to live well before God. Look, this is something God's expecting us to do is I walk with them step by step showing them how to live well before God. And so, and so, and so this was God's expectation of the parent. But today's society says walk with them step by step and just show them how to be successful and you're a good parent. So now we're following the American dream before God's dream. No, 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 no. God's dream, there ain't nothing wrong with that, but I can't, God, I got what, what I, the first thing that God wanted me to do is show them how to live well before him. Amen. Uh, write down 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 through 17. And, and I, I'm not going to go there today because I got I to gotta get through this because I think we've got maybe about one or two more weeks and then we'll be completed with this series. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 through 17. And you see where the Apostle Paul said, I, 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 you got many instructors, he said, but I'm your spiritual father. Come on. And he said, imitate me. That word imitate is where we get the, the Greek word, uh, we get our word mimic. Yeah. Mimic. You see, the biggest thing you do with your kid is not what, but who you are. The biggest thing you do with your child is not what. Maybe you do a lot of things, but who are you in front of them? Who are you? It involves process. It involves, it's repetition. It's sowing in them one season and receiving a harvest another. What do you mean, Pastor? Did you get it the first time? Your parents showed you something? You learned something? Did you? No, what happened? We picked it up as we kept practicing, as we kept going over. This is even how you, 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 you build your relationship with God. You keep going over this stuff. All right, number three. Uh, here, here, uh, this, this is one of my favorite ones. And now you, 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 can't, you can't take this series and just build it off of one. You can't, I think the first series, bless you. <laughs> I haven't messed with you about that in a long time, huh? I think she's allergic to me, to my preacher or something. Every time she's neat. How's that baby? Come on, y'all give him a hand. Look at that newborn baby. Look, look that's already going to be daddy's girl right there, huh? Look, look at the way he got her. That's how, that's how I was with Tavian. My wife said, you're smothering him. He'd be laying down, just have him just right there. So you need to let him breathe. Uh, and so you can't, you can't try and build... Just off of last week's teaching. Now you got to have this whole thing and, and work it together. But uh, number three, a uh, godly pr a biblical principle, build relationships that bond. This is going to be so, th 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 tonight's going to be so powerful. I know that clock's lying, right? I know I don't have 20 minutes. Yeah, I got, no, I got 15 minutes. Yeah, it is lying. Jesus. That went quick. Got all night, yeah. So our new people ain't saying that. <laughs> like, man, dude, been, when are you going to sit down? Let's pick up Tyler's offer and let's go. Okay. 
build relationships that bond. Now, we looked at this at the end of last week, Exodus chapter 13, verse 14. Babe, you got a mic? Can you read that for me? You don't have a mic. Okay. Exodus 13, 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, can, you can stand right there if you want. Huh? Exodus 13, 14. Unless somebody already had it. Somebody had it? 13, 14. It doesn't matter. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> So it, will, it, so it shall be when your sons ask you in time to come, saying, What is this? Then you shall say to him, By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So when your child comes, why do we do this? Why do we go? Why do we? Why do we? God automatically expected us to take them by the hand and show them, tell them. This is why dad praises the way he does this is the why mom uh, uh, seeks the way she does this is why we give this is why we pray this is why we seek God through the word not this is what we do go to the room huh I can see some teenagers get that answer a lot huh Okay. Say this. Build relationships that bond. Build relationships. Now this, go to First Thessalonians, uh, Thessalonians, sweetheart, chapter 2, verse 11. Now this is a perfect picture. Exodus 13, 14, this is a perfect picture of 1 Thessalonians 2, 11. You got it? Go ahead. As, as you know how we exhorted and confronted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children. Shh. That you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own Come on. Did, did you hear that, Shane? Read that one more time, sweetheart. As you know how we exhorted. Put, put, pick up the mic a little bit okay, or speak up. As you know how uh -huh. we have exhorted. exhorted you. Okay, write, underline that word exhorted or write it down if, you, if you're on your phone. Exhorted. And comforted. And comforted. And charged, charged every one of you, uh huh, as a father does his own children. See, he's giving us a picture. See, don't don't he? You, you look, read the inner. He's giving us a picture of how a father, and now sometimes the father's absent or the father is there but still absent. So, mom, remember you 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 are also a householder. So you you you're anointed to step in if he don't want to do it. But fathers, come on, we need come on. Someone say, fathers, fathers. we need you to step it up. Amen. Amen. This was a charge God gave to the dad. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You don't need to be out there chasing waterfalls. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Right? right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Just do what? <laughs> Stick to the. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're chasing. Come on, man. We need you to. We need you to be at home, man. We we need. <laughs> uh, so, uh, he and so he's telling you. Look, he said. Now look. Now now you got that word exhorted. Okay, you ready for this word? I love this word. Call near. A father does his child or parent. Call them near. Invite them into your presence. What's the first thing usually a parent does when a child comes? What do you want? Well, nothing. No more. Get get us. Nothing, no more. I did want something, but never mind. Or they come with a question. You, you, can I go there? Go there. Teenagers, can I go there? You, they come with a question. You're too lazy to find out the answer. 
or you don't want to think at that you don't want to exercise your brain cells and so you're just like I don't know I don't know go over there it will never I don't know I don't know go over there <laughs> well, how come the parents just, they, they ain't even looking at their teenagers just like yeah <laughs> and the teenagers like looking right at the parent no, no, God, a father invites his child into his presence. He calls them near and helps them. Okay, let's figure this out. That's why God gave them to you. Not so you have someone to cut the yard. Not so you got someone to, to wash the dishes. Not just so you have someone to vacuum. Not just so you have someone to polish. But someone that you are to train up. And nurture them and teach them and train them. Amen. And so and so then, so then in building a relationship that bonds, you have to invite them into your presence. But now my next question is: are you approachable? Because if, if they know you by now, if they're teenage, they know you. And so, I receive, sir. <laughs> He's so in. I receive. And so, <laughs> he said, that was, a, that was a wrong time, boy. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, where was I, man? <laughs> Are you approachable? Because, see, sometimes our kids, okay, without a show of hands, don't show your hands, okay? Don't raise your hand. Tell your neighbor, don't raise your hand. How many of you did your child ever go through something? And then you tell them, why didn't you come to me? Like, you're so approachable. Mijo, mija, why didn't you come to me? Because you've already presented yourself as either one, I don't care. Go to your room. Get out of here. Or two, figure it out. So there they knew, I got, they're going to tell me, I just got to go figure this out. So my, so am I, come on, say this, am I, am I? approachable? So, so this is what, okay, okay, come on, say this, we're, we're, building, we're building a relationship that bonds. A relationship that bonds. So, then, so then, so God says, I want you to be able to call them near. I want you to be able to invite them into your presence. Have you ever invited someone but they didn't show up? Yeah. Why did they not show up? Okay, 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 okay. so I receive, so now... So here's what we got to do. Here's, okay, you ready? Are you ready? I say, are you ready? Yes, sir. Where is it? I know I wrote it down. Here we go. How's your customer care center at home? Now, now teenagers, this is going for you too. Okay, kids, I'm not just talking to the parents, but all of us, we've got to work on our customer care center at home. What do you mean, Pastor? You ever, okay, these businesses, they got customer care, huh? Customer care. What does that mean? We care about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. You're, you're valuable to us, yeah. Come on. and we care about you. Now, if, if you feel you were wronged, if you feel maybe, uh, uh, if you feel just, may, okay, you know what? You can come talk to us, and let's figure this out together. Yeah. Right? Anyone ever work at a customer care center? Anyone? Raise your hand. A waiter? Wait, that's customer care. Any kind of service. And what? I didn't like this. Oh, let me go fix that for you, right? Let me go fix. I'll fix. No, we're going to work this out, and, and it's going to be okay. But now let, let, now in our home, let somebody have something they're wrong, and they get their head chopped off. Mom's food wasn't good, for example. Okay. <laughs>
I can't help my taste buds. I don't even know how to respond to that right now. So I'm just going to move on. But look, so... But our customer care, and we'll, and we'll, be, we'll go out of our way polite yes, sir. to complete strangers. Some of them heathens. Some of them don't love God, don't want nothing to do with God, but we'll go out of our way. And now God says, I want you to love the ones in your home. I want you to be gentle to the ones in your home and let them have somewhere where they feel wrong. Let them point out a wrong, and automatically we go to cutting, slice, and dice. And and so now, and now, after that, we want them to come invite them into our presence when they did something bad and expect, because they've already gotten there to use, but vice versa, teenagers, you got to be able... Okay, let me just write. Let me give you a tip. Let me just give you a tip because I'm, 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 I'm staying too long. See, listen. See, you are responsible for creating environments that encourage healthy relationships in the home. Let me say this. Parent, you are responsible for creating environments that encourage healthy relationships in the home. You, you're responsible. You. But can I give you a, a, a pointer, teenagers? You can help. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Let's not just, but because you, you can help. Amen. The stronger, listen, let, let me give you this. Let me tell you what we got. See, the stronger the relationship with the child the higher the probability they will embrace your values. So you want them to embrace the value of God and, and how important God is in our life and how important it is to follow his word. The, 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 the stronger the relationship, the, the, the better the bond that you have with your children, the higher probability they're going to embrace what you say you value. See, but if your relationship is broken with them, and you're over here trying to preach to them, but they see you making all these other bonds outside of the home. They're like, well, I mean, why do I want to follow the God you serve? Look how you treat me, but then look how you treat these strangers. Come on. Now, don't ever, now, if you made the mistake, don't ever let that, where the enemy uses that to dupe you into accepting sin. No. It's unloving to allow evil. Okay? See, that there's got to be a balance in this. It's not just, okay, now, it's just, no. No, no, no. But, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, what did I ask you the other day, Dylan? Yeah, I asked him the other day. See, uh, uh, I've worked on building this relationship with my, my, my boys. And just the other day, we, 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 we were getting some haircuts. And uh, I asked them. We were sitting outside. And they, 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 this one guy, oh, my gosh. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, and don't, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm this tough guy. But I'm not intimidated by anybody. Um, I love God. Um, I, you know, my, 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 one of my favorite ministries is going into the prison and preaching to, you know, prisoners. I love that. But now we have the, the privilege of ministering to people that have just gotten out of prison. Now, these are, you know, some men have been there for murder, man, coming for 30 years. And, and if that line, I'll tell them, hey, hold be quiet. <laughs> you know, no, because the, the guy learned how to respect the anointing, the, the, the presence of God on a man or woman of God. So anyways, uh, so we're in there, and this guy, I mean, you know, I don't know the best way to say it, but, you know, he was a, a vato loco, man. He was just tatted all on his face, gold teeth, and he just comes in talking about how, uh, 
and he's cheating on his wife and his, he takes counsel from his son on how to fix his Facebook because he got a phone call. I didn't know you could call people on Facebook. Oh, he got a Facebook phone call and he thinks his wife got the notification and he said, and so, man, you know, how do I fix it so she don't get the notification? And he said, I teach my boy. You know, I try to give him consejo. I try to give him counsel, advice. If you ever, when you cheat on your wife, make sure she's at least prettier than your. But now, see, my flesh is rising up, and there's no peace in me. So that's my cue. Don't say a word, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk in the flesh. Because my first, see, because if there's peace now, I know. Okay, I'm gonna be able to speak to this man with some peace, with some love. But right now, it was just all Marcus. There was no Holy Ghost. It would have been the right thing to say. But it was the wrong time because I had no peace in me. I was just, uh, oh, why not just teach him not, teach him not to cheat? Well, I mean, you really love this person. Well, you go catch a disease and come back and bring it to them. I mean, what are you teaching? And so I'm just like, oh, Lord, let me. And so they finished dealing with the haircut. I said, come on, let's wait outside for your mom because she dropped us off. I said, let's wait outside for your mom. And so we're just talking and we, I explained to him a little bit about that. And you know, I'm just talking to him. But then I asked him, I said, I said, can I ask you an honest question? He said, yeah. I said, it's not personal or nothing. I said, but just, I said, answer me honestly. You know, I want you to be honest. Have you ever questioned why we do what we do? He's like, what do you mean, Dad? I said, man, do you ever question, man, why, why we tithe? Why we, uh, you know, every, just everything, I just kind of going through, have you ever questioned God, you know, because he's very intellectual. That kid is smart. Uh, he's very, very smart. Uh, well, you, you're a senior, and this is already your, you're taking second year college courses. <laughs> Come on, you can't imagine. That dude's smart. And so I'm like, so I'm asking him, you know, because I want to make sure he's not trying to get too smart for God. Because, you know, faith can be, faith can be, it don't make sense. You won't cross all your T's and dot your I's sometimes. Huh? Walk on water. Don't make sense. Huh? Okay. So, uh, I'm asking him, do, do, have you ever, and he's like, Dad, you know what? Honestly, I never have. And I'm almost like, why not? You know, because he's so smart. He, this is what he told me. He said, because you, you, you raised me right. And this is all I know. And I see the results in your life. But see, we have a relationship that bonded. That he says, you know what, because I see the result, I see who you used to be, I see who you are, and so now I have no problem embracing these values. He said, because all I know is God. That's all you've ever taught me is God. And so now I've embraced God. Your God is now my God. Come on. You see what I'm saying? See, and, and so what? Because see, they see, they see you don't just, you, 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 you're, you're living what you're preaching and not telling them, do as I say, don't do as I do. See, there's a genuineness. Now, am I saying I'm perfect? By all means, he knows I'm not perfect. She'll be the first one to tell you I'm not perfect. But they know I love God. Amen. They know I seek God. Amen. They know I won't lead them astray. Come on, Come on. They know I have their best interests at heart. They, they know they can come to me. And I have to keep kind of reinforce that. But you can come to me with anything. You have to understand that. Uh, and so the stronger the relationship with your child, the higher the probability they're going to embrace your values. So a tip on improving your customer care center at home is don't get so disturbed by the negative. Don't get so disturbed by the negative situation, the negative comment. Don't get those, don't, don't, don't lose your cool. Amen. 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 Don't get so disturbed by correction. Come on. Teenagers, just because your mom or dad corrects you, don't get so disturbed about it. It's okay. Oh, you always just tell me I'm doing wrong. Baby, it's because you did it wrong. And that's okay, but I'm just trying to show you how to do it right. And quit focusing on the negative. 
Doing that will ruin the rest of your day. Don't ruin the rest of your day because of negative situation. Don't ruin the rest of your day because of some correction. That can, if you let it, it can be a unity killer. Unity is a place of power. Division is a place of defeat. you got to keep the unity in your home. Teenagers, children, you can help with this. Amen? So now, the, so exhort, call them near, invite them. Come on, write that down. Let's work uh, on our customer care center at home. Let's work on our customer care center at home. One thing, one thing that, that, that dropped in my spirit the other day is, is Jermaine, I think we're going to do a, a, a player of the week. Come on, we, we're a team. I'm thinking we're going to do a player of the week uh, or, or maybe a player of the month. Did you say player or prayer? Player. Oh. We're a team. Our family, y- y'all are a team. Y'all got to work together. And so who's our, our shining star of the week? Who went out of their way, walked in honor, did all their chores without being asked? Come on, you see what I'm saying? Who, uh, dad's going to win all, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm going to be involved. I'm a, I'm a player on this team too. Mom's a player on this team too. Yes, you probably get. But, you see, we, we're, we're, we reward each other because they got to see, look, th- th- this, why? It's valuable. It's valuable. Uh, so you are responsible for creating environments that encourage a healthy relationship at home. Uh, so now, let me give you some points, just some points to help build bonding relationships. Number one, this is all, all under, uh, or A, this, I guess this would be A. This is all under uh, point number three of building relationships that bond. Show unconditional love. See, I may not agree with your behavior, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. I may not agree with your behavior. I don't, have to, I don't have to stand it. I don't have to put up with it. But that don't mean I don't love you. So no matter what, I always reinforce my love for them. I always make sure they know, no matter what, I love you. And it's because I love you that I correct you. Um, she, yeah. Can I just... Sh- Hurry, because I'm out of time. Okay. Because as he's talking about building that, un, that bond, you have to get to know your child because, you know, any time that there's going to be maybe a meeting maybe with the teacher or with the coach, you have to know your child. Like, you know your child, you know? And I understand if your child made a mistake or whatever, okay, but at the end of the day, hold on, I know my child didn't do this because I know my child. But at the same time, okay, yeah, that sounds like my kid. You know that? You know what I mean? You know you, you know, you have to know your child, but at the same time, you have to back them up. They have to know that your, you have your child's, like you said, their best interest at heart, and that you have their back. Amen? And so that's why this is so important, because the enemy will always try to come in and destroy this bond, to destroy this relationship. But that's where you and I as parents, we have the obligation to, you know what, create this bond where the enemy cannot destroy it. Let me give an example on this. We had a situation years back at Coronado. Uh, Dylan was being bullied, and his teacher made a nasty comment. A nasty comment. Boy, we were hot. You know, we're ready. And so, man, you know, we, we, we called the superintendent. We called, I mean, the principal. We had a meeting. And it just, it just, did, it just seemed like they were just kind of, let's just brush on the rung and let's just move on. But we, but so, man, we were like, man, what do we do? We're ready. Man, I was going to, man, I'll press charges. I'll call the news. You know, I'm ready. What's up? You know. <laughs> But then we said, hold on, you know what? Let's talk to Dylan. We got some, we even, we called our, our man, we called Dr. Forbes. He gave us some awesome advice. And so we sat with Dylan. We said, Dylan, what do you want to do? We want you to know we got your back. What do you want to do? Dad, I'm happy. I'm just ready to, let's just, let's just move on. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Amen. See, sometimes we go, we'll go over because that's my boy. That's my baby. 
that's my little girl, whatever, you know, you have. And you'll go over, but ask them, how do you, do you, number one, do you feel like I had your back? Number two, okay, what do you want to do, son? Mom, I'm, 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 I'm good. Dad, I'm good. I'm ready. Just, let's just put it behind. Let's go. Okay, that, that's what we're going to do. And that was it. See, God, just make sure they have that on the love. Let's move on. Hurry. Right, let me give, I got to finish this today. Okay, number uh, B. Schedule time together. Schedule time together. Giving them a ride to a game or movie is not. Schedule time together. Schedule quality time together. And, and, and not just so you can preach to them, but you got to get to know them. They got to know you. Uh, C, focused attention. Write that down. Focused attention. Remember I told you they did a, they did a, a study and the average two-year-old gets at least 37 seconds of focused attention from dad. The average two-year-old gets an, av uh, uh, an average of 37 seconds of focused attention from dad. That's sad. That your, your child can only get 37 seconds of focused attention from, from, from dad. Oh, it's quiet in the church tonight. Put the stupid smartphone down. Let me say it one more time. Put the stupid smartphone down. G give, me, give, me a f give me something. G Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. So just talk to me. Come on. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I heard about that. Oh look, yeah, I really want to buy it. That's not focused attention. Put the stupid thing down. Your greatest responsibility is sitting in front of you. It's not on that screen. Your greatest responsibility is not coming through that screen. It's not coming through a tube. It's not, it's not, it's not on no game center. It's sitting right in front. Of, that's your greatest responsibility. And, and it's not the phone. It's not, it's not the internet. It's not the TV. It's no, your greatest responsibility is that child. Put that stupid smartphone down. I, 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 I took uh, Tavian and uh, Malachi, Tasha's Malachi to McDonald's that day, and they were playing, and I was sitting there watching everybody's parent. Every old ladies <laughs> were on Facebook. <laughs> That's not. You took them. You get, all you did was give them a ride. Oh, I took you to, to, to go eat, didn't I? You didn't even talk to them. You took them. I took it, I took it to McDonald's. Don't, don't say I don't take it to McDonald's. I take it to McDonald's. You didn't even talk to them. You gave them a ride and paid for the meal. That's all you did. There was no attention. There was, no, there was nothing. You were a chauffeur. Not a parent. Oh, am I, I'm sorry. Am I? Oh, I forgot to give you the other two. Give me give you the other two. The other two words. Comfort and charge. Cheer them on. You cheer them on. It's Austin. It's words of encouragement. And you, 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 you cheer them on. Even if they didn't win, man, you did your best. Even if they didn't make the A, but you, man, did you try hard? I did, Dad. Man, I'm proud of you. But come on, let's work. For, we're going to work for that A. It's cheering them on in life. Amen? Okay, so now let me go back. What was I? Focus attention, right? Uh, a, B, C. What am I next? What am I on next? I don't even know. Who? D, eye contact. 
one of the greatest uh, examples of, of respect is when I talk to you, I'm looking you in the eye. I'm looking you in the eye. What am I telling you? I'm listening. One thing I, I, I apologize. I can't stand. I can't stand this. Huh, Tony? As I'm talking, and you interrupt me. Oh, my gosh. Okay, then you, you just tell me what you're going to say. I ain't going to say nothing. Because obviously you think it's more important for me to hear what you have to say. And vice versa, I'm not going to interrupt you. Because now, you know what that, with people that interrupt people, you want me to tell you what that means? That means what you were saying I didn't hear because I had to have been thinking what I was going to say. I was, while you were talking, I was thinking what I was going to say. And so now I'm not even listening to you. A good leader is a good listener. And if you're going to lead your kids, you need to learn to listen to them. Hear them out. And so I'm going to make eye contact. Why? Because you're important to me. I respect what you say. Amen? Amen? And now I, get to, I now really get to know what, how I'm going to answer you. We can't, so I, do you write down eye contact? Uh, e, physical contact. Man, they, they need physical, especially you uh, that have daughters, they need to know they can be touched, and they, they can be embraced in a non-sexual way. They need to know what it feels like to be embraced by, by dad, by mom, and it's not even a sexual way. It's a, a real, loving, physical contact. They need a hug from you, Dad. They need a hug from you, Mom. Hug them. Kiss them on the cheek. Actually, God told, and, and, and God told the brethren, greet each other with the holy kiss. Huh? I had to teach my mom how to have physical contact with me. Huh, Mom? I did. No, I'm not trying to embarrass her. But I, because she wasn't raised this way. My dad raised me to be, we, we had physical contact. It was, man, look, it, 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 it didn't matter. I could be a high school. I'm getting, a high school. I'm dro- he's dropping me off. Dad, I'll see, I'll see you later. He didn't know. Oh, that's embarrassing. He, he loves me. And so, and so, come here, come here, come here. So my mom, I had to teach my mom, and she'd be like, Mom, I'll see you later. And I'll go to give her a hug, and she give me a hug, give me a hug. And she's she like this. I tell her, Mom, hug me. I am, be quiet, you're embarrassing me. No, Mom, you better hug me. Hold me. Her family? Oh, no. I got there. I remember, I remember we, we were eating dinner. Y'all got a minute? I'm almost finished. We, we're, we're, the, we're, the first time I went, uh, they had a family. that they, Every Sunday they would get together. And, and I went, hey, Swaga, how you doing? I went, gave her a hug, gave her a kiss on the cheek. And nobody, no one came to the matriarch. Nobody came to the, to the mom of the family. And showed, them some, showed her some love. I said, what? This is weird. And so I said, okay, well, maybe they're going to do it when they leave. That's it. So we ate all the food she cooked. And, and, and she, you know, it ain't no hamburger helper, you know, Margaret. This ain't no hamburger helper. This is, you know, uh, chile, uh, carne con chile rojo and homemade beans and homemade, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, no homemade tortillas, but that's okay. <laughs> she do gorditas. It's homemade, homemade, everything. And, and I said, okay, so we're leaving. And I go. And I give her a hug and kiss her cheek. I say, Yvonne. And so we're leaving. I said, you're not going to give her a hug? We don't do that here. Girl, you better go give that girl a hug. You better give her a kiss. And, and after that, they all start doing it. You, you know what that did to, to, to my suegra?
But that's why it's important for you to she, start But she, she didn't raise him that way. Because she and didn't now, raise him. And now, that's what I'm saying. Come on, you got, because later you're going to want to hug. Later you're going to wish they'd give you a kiss on the cheek. So it's important that you do that with them now. And, and men, it's important you show your daughters what, what, what a non-sexual physical contact looks like. That way when, 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 when a creep tries to come around, wait a minute, you don't not supposed to touch me there. Oh, this ain't right. No, no. My dad didn't show me like that. I wish somebody would talk to me. Number, okay, what am I on? F, have fun together. Have fun together. Why is it you can go have fun with your friends, but you can't have fun with the kids? Who are you trying to look out for? Your boys? Your homegirls? Or your kids? God didn't give you your friends. He gave you those kids. Your first responsibility, ha, God, is them. Have fun with them. Don't, you don't have to be serious all the time. You're not that bad. You don't have to keep your, up your rep in front of your kids. No, they're going to know. I'm, what do they got to know? Come on, Dan. Have fun with them. Let them enjoy your presence. You, and you don't have to be in teaching mode all the time. Come here, man. Get your notepad out. Let me, let me. You don't have to be in teaching mode all the time. You ain't got to preach a sermon to them all the time. You, you don't have to. You don't got to be in teaching mode all the time. Have fun with your kids. Get your notepad out. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Come on, man. Let them enjoy you. We have fun all the time, don't we? Monopoly. Boy. That's our game. We, have, we enjoy it. We enjoy it. Now, the card game, not the board game. The card game, Monopoly. Anyway. Uh, G? Is that what I'm on? Yes, Pray for one another. A lot of times we take trips to Lubbock. That's our time to worship together. And then we intercede for one another. Amen. Pray for another. H. Now remember this is points to build bonding relationship. This is going to require constant repair and ongoing maintenance. It's going to require... Constant repair and ongoing maintenance. You'll see the older, the, as they get older, some things that worked before are not going to work anymore. A butt whooping might not work anymore at a certain age. Huh? When, when did you find out the butt whooping didn't work? You want me to tell you when? You whooped them as hard as you can. They just turned and looked at you. You're like, okay, we're going to have to change this up. Huh? Y'all remember that day, mom, dad? You whooped them, and they just turned and looked at you like. Huh? <laughs> Malachi said, no, we're still good. We, it still works. <laughs> no, but see, but see, that's okay. Because, oh, no, there's other ways. We can, we, we can get some, uh, yeah, yo, my, oh, yeah, my boy, y'all ready to pull some weeds? 100 degree weather, three hours, pull weeds, you ain't getting paid. Come on. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Take the phone away. Yeah. TV's off. Read. Oh, no, we got, we got some money, it's okay. You might have toughened up a little bit, that's all right. We got, we got some other ways. Don't think that was the only way I could come across. Get my point across. So, uh, but Amen. 
And now let me leave you with this. Teach them. Let me add, no. Do they know how to repair a mess? Or are you just teaching them how to be perfect? What do you mean, pastor? They're going to make mistakes. You know how I know? Because you do. You make mistakes. But are you so focused on just teaching them how to be perfect that they don't know how to fix mistakes? Have you taught them how to ask for forgiveness? Have you taught them how to fix a broken relationship? Have you taught them how to go and, and, and admit the truth, even if it means you're going to get in trouble? That's been one of my kids. That's been one I've been having to go over. And, and I try to teach them, look, every time, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you this hint. It's a boy. Okay. <laughs> I only have sons. And boy, it can get caught in a lie. It's like almost day after day, week after week. I'm like, son, haven't you realized? I know everything. <laughs> I'm going to find out. Give it a minute. What's done in the dark, I'm letting you know, it's going to come to the light. And so you can look, the, it, it just, just come, come with it. Come with the truth. Come on, it's okay. Like you already got a mess, that's fine. But come on, it's better. You, you won't be in as much trouble if you come and say, look, you know what, Dad? I did this, this, such and such. And it's mad to let you know. Man, see, we can fix this. Yeah, see, so I'm, I'm teaching them how they can help repair some stuff. And not just think they're going to they're be perfect all the time because you're not. Right. And so you got to help them, help them to know how. I can, we can fix this. It's, this ain't the end of the road. It's going to be okay. Amen. It's going to be okay. Amen? Amen? Come on, say that. It's going to be okay. Amen. Have you taught your child that? It's going to be okay. We're, we're going to get through this. Yeah. You're going to be all right. Amen? Amen? Not, how dare you? I can't believe. No, we, can be right. we, we can get through this. Did y'all get anything tonight? Yeah. I love this. I was so excited about, about teaching this uh, tonight. I hope this is helping your, in your home. I think we're going to probably close up next week and, and we'll finish the parenting series. Don't ever walk in fear. Uh, I received in parenting. Don't ever walk in fear. Uh, walk by faith, I received, sir. Walk by faith, not by fear. You, nothing, I received, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Keep God first. Amen. I'm serious, man. Keep God first. And if you show them young, boy, it'd be a lot easier as they get older. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. You got anything else? For, we're done. Are y'all ready to give? Let's bring our tithe, so our seed ushers, you may serve the people. Praise his holy name. Stay focused. Don't stay focused on the negative. Amen. Let them enjoy your presence. Be approachable. I think that's one of the biggest things is, are you approachable? Are you approachable? Um, why everybody's writing down, let your kids see, like as Pastor just taught on Sunday about walking by faith, let them uh -huh. see you walking that out by faith. Yeah. Let them see that, you know, include them. Like, you know what, we might be going through this, but you know what, as a family, let's pray together. Let's, yeah. let's believe together and let, and let the, let, let the, let the manifestation that comes out encourage their faith. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you parents, one day your kids are going to have to go through their own trial. 
where it's like you're gonna have to kind of be outside of it and they have to experience it on their own mm -hmm. and you're gonna be their biggest teacher on this because they're gonna see that you know what maybe maybe you and dad went through something and because you brought it out as a family and y'all prayed together and then the, and then god came through you don't understand how that encourages them to believe like you know what this thing is real yeah. and when they encounter something then you know what they can go before god and where they have a breakthrough themselves and so i encourage you you know to don't just leave faith just in here but you know what share it within your home just share it within your home you know you heard dylan's testimony yeah, even funded. though even mm -hmm. though maybe mom and dad were on him because he quit his job without his permission but regardless of how we were he had faith because he knew how it worked he knew because he's been taught faith mm -hmm. you know it wasn't just preached to him he's he's seen it and he's able to live it and he's able to live it yeah not quote some scripture right Good. a parrot can quote scripture we're not here to be an echo but a voice see what i'm saying and so he's able to live this out now and he's seeing results don't mean you're going to know everything. You're not going to know everything all the time. And it's okay. You know what, son? L l let me get back with you on that. There's nothing wrong with that. That shows you care enough to find out and not just spit some garbage or, I don't know, go to your room. <laughs> Come on. We're good. Let's figure this out. Amen. It'll be good. Y'all ready to pray? Father, we bring our tithes. We sow our seed of faith, love, and obedience. Oh, my God. Almost forgot. Almost forgot. Psalm 115. I'll, I'll, you, I'll, I'll read it, and you can just uh, repeat after me. What do we... What, what was Sunday? The 7th? 8, 7, there it is right there. All right, we're going to declare Psalm 115, verse 12 through 15. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He'll bless the house of Aaron. He'll bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. Now turn to your neighbor and tell him, may the Lord give you increase. More and more, more, and more. You, and you and your children, may you be blessed, you be blessed. By, the Lord, by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Amen. 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 That's Psalm 115. The money just keeps on coming. Hallelujah.